Welcome to Chopstick Travel. We're Luke and Sabrina, and today we are in Milan. This is one of the most famous cities in all of Europe, and in this episode, we're gonna take you on a street food tour of Milan, tasting its own unique cuisine and showing you some of the world-class sites. It's gonna be a great day, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go eat some Italian food. First stop today is at a super famous institution here in Milano called Luini Panzerotti and they're famous for their panzerottis and other baked and fried goods and we've ordered up two of the classic types of panzerotti so it is a stuffed fried bread. This one is with mozzarella and pomodoro and then the other one has mozzarella and prosciutto and this place like I said is an institution and it's just a little kind of street food place. You don't have any tables to sit at here just standing room only and let's try it out. Oh my god. Look at that. Super cheesy. Nice tart tomato. Yum. It's crispy and fluffy on the outside. Golden fried on the outside. And I gotta go in for another bite. Get a little deeper into the filling. <laughs> oh yeah. Wow. That is awesome. So this is the mozzarella with prosciutto and it's honestly like a luxurious pizza pocket which I used to eat quite a bit as a kid and this place has been around since 1888 so you know it's uh, here for a reason right in the center of town, a prime location. Let's try the prosciutto one. Mm. Oh yum. So that's actually prosciutto cotto, so cooked ham with mozzarella. There's no tomato in this one. The flavor is completely different. It's a, a lot more salty. It's so fluffy and pillowy. It really absorbs all the cheese. It's like a pillow. I love it. Super cool little street food place. Mm, yum, oh my God, there's a lot of cheese in there. All right, great first stop. They have actually an extensive menu of different panzerottis. You can even get uh, sweet versions filled with chocolate and all kinds of different things. And uh, that's definitely not enough for breakfast today, so we're gonna keep going. So this is the Duomo, the iconic cathedral of Milano and one of the most famous sites in all of Italy. It's extremely intricate on the outside and you have this huge piazza out front that's full of uh, selfie taking tourists and lots of pigeons. Right next to the Duomo is the Galleria. This is a covered shopping area and it is extremely high-end things. Louis Vuitton, Prada, Gucci, all of the designer brands and it's all under one roof. Very interesting. The details here are amazing from the ceilings to the walls to the floor. Everything is so intricate. What an amazing place to walk through. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So within the Galleria, above one of the Prada stores, you have this really cool cafe called Marchesi, which has been around since 1824. It's a really classy place, and then you get this really nice view over the Galleria. And we've ordered up a couple different things, and just check out this cappuccino here that I've got. It's literally a masterpiece. There's a little flower painted on top there, and then we've got the baba o rum, which is the pastry that's been soaked in rum, and then the world famous tiramisu. And this is such a cool place. The atmosphere is really fancy. You get this really nice view over the Galleria, and I feel a little bit underdressed in my shorts, but that's okay. Let's dig it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me try out this baba o rum first. This is one of my favorite Italian desserts. You can see that it's been soaked in that rum. Let's try it out. Mm. Wow, it's super saturated, but full of liquid. Served a little bit chilled, and you get that nice aroma of the rum. Chase it down, a little bit of cappuccino. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice and foamy, frothy on the top. Feels a little bit wrong to destroy the artwork on top of it, but that is tasty. Okay, let's test out the tiramisu. Oh, wow, look at that. My fork literally just goes right through that like butter. And you can see the layer. There should be some lady fingers on the bottom there. Let's try that. Yum. Oh, that's awesome. It's actually not as strong a coffee flavor as some of the tiramisu's that I've tried before, but it's more of that mascarpone. You can taste a little bit of the cheesiness and just incredible views down over the Galleria here. Such a cool place. This is a super cool cafe. Since it's hidden above the Prada, you wouldn't really know that you could get this incredible viewpoint for taking pictures down onto the mosaic floor of the Galleria, and the food was delicious. Coffee too. This city is absolutely beautiful. It's got a completely different feel than Rome. It feels a little bit more modern, yet retaining its historic charm at the same time compared to Rome. And everywhere you look, it's just something beautiful. You just come around the corner, there's a huge basilica, and uh, there is a restaurant here that we have eaten at before in Florence called El Antico Venaio, famous for their panini. We're gonna wait in line. There's a big line to try it out, but it is totally worth it. So how about this line? Same in Florence as it is today in Milan. At least this time we know it's going to be worth it, right? Exactly, yeah. That's going to be good. Okay, ciao ragazzi, prego! Thank you. Ciao. We finally have our panini. We waited in line for about 45 minutes and check it out. This looks awesome. So first you got the scacciata bread, which is a Tuscan bread with no salt. And then if I open it up, you could see inside that it is stuffed with pancetta and baked tomatoes and rocket as well as pecorino cream. Oh my gosh, my mouth is watering. I'm super hungry after waiting all that time. Let's give it a try. Mm. That pancetta is amazing. It's super stringy, but also very oily. As soon as you start chewing down, it just melts away in your mouth. And then there's a really nice tartness from that baked tomato. The rocket gives it a little bit of crunch and of course the pecorino cream just is wonderful. That is really good. It's so stringy, but 
that will just melt away in your mouth. Oh my gosh, wow. So the original Alan Tico Vanaio is in Florence, but now he's here in Milan. So I'm excited to try this one out. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Yum, that thing is fully loaded. I love that baked tomato. Mm. So the reason this place is so popular, besides it being absolutely delicious, is you're not going to find anything else for six euros like this here in Milan. Well, not as good as this, I should say. And it's just such a good combination of a really high quality bread, really high quality meat, uh, all homemade creams and uh, cheeses are just amazing. Mm. That was a great panini and now we've come to Castle Sforzesco here in the center of Milan. This is a landmark. It's this beautiful castle, brick castle, and it's surrounded by a very popular park. It's almost like the central park. So we're gonna do a little bit of exploring, uh, work off the sandwich and check out the park and castle. Right outside of the castle is this beautiful park. It's very extensive. It's got beautiful archways and sculptures and people are just out here relaxing. For such a busy city, it's really not that busy in the park and it's a nice way to escape kind of the hecticness of Milan. What is he doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm vlogging. Me too. <laughs> What's the issue? just popped into a super cool little place called Lalter Bar and it's right on the road where the tram station is and we have ordered up something very interesting it's called a Hugo Spritz so what it is is it's Prosecco elderberry syrup uh, seltzer and then a little bit of mint which you can see on top and honestly it smells really nice I'm gonna go ahead and have a sip it's that time of day Oh my gosh, that is like Prosecco mixed with a green apple. It's really good. And then of course there's a bunch of ice in there so it's really nice and cold, really refreshing. Mm. Wow, I can't get over that. It really has a nice green apple flavor. So we had no idea, but apparently when you order the aperitif, they will bring you a couple different plates of things. We've got a few different little uh, finger foods here. They brought out a little panini for us, some chips, and honestly, we had no idea that it was included in the price, so it's super nice. It's just like a pre-dinner snack. That was a great little bar to have a Hugo and they have all kinds of other different drinks too. But now it's definitely time for gelato. We haven't even had gelato on this trip yet. I can't believe it, but let's go get one. So this gelato shop is called Chocolate Milano. We definitely had to go with their dark chocolate. Just look at the color of that. That looks super rich. We got the medium size, 350 euros 
and wow, I'm already very disappointed that we have not been eating more gelato on this trip because this looks incredible. Oh man. <laughs> That's amazing. The texture is so gummy and sticky. It's completely different than like a regular ice cream. The texture is just incredible. You can tell that this is some high quality gelato. The chocolate, nice and rich. It's dark chocolate, but it's not like, a, I'd say maybe it's like a 60% dark chocolate because it's not very bitter. It's still got a nice sweetness to it. Yum, yum. Well, I don't know what you're gonna have, Sabrina. This is one is mine. Give me. I just can't get over the texture of this. It's ridiculously creamy and thick, and it looks like it would be like really rich and maybe too much to have of just one flavor. She told us we could have actually got three flavors with the medium, but it's not. It's perfect. It's not too sweet. It's just, just right. Oh my god. That is incredible. Yum. Might be the best gelato we've ever had. Yeah. Better than Tavinki. <laughs> what is Tavinki? What is this? Tavinki. What is that? <laughs> it was my favorite. Texture wise. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Texture wise, texture wise, give me one more bite. <laughs> what are you mm, that's so good. That's probably one of the better gelatos that we've ever had. What do you think? Agree? All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. What an incredible day of eating here in Milano. What was the best thing we had today, Sabrina? I'd have to say it was probably the panini. Everything was so fresh and just so good, even though you had to wait in a super long line. Yeah, 45 minutes, but it was totally worth it. Anytime you can go to El Antico Vanai, I definitely recommend it. Make yeah. sure if you haven't already subscribed, hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next episode, and we'll see you on another episode of Chopstick Travel from Italy soon. Bye. Bye.